Hi, I'm Steve Costello. I'm a math specialist and interventionist in grades K through five in Massachusetts. And this is the basics of number talks. The goal of a number talk should always be to get kids to explain their mathematical thinking. Uh, this is everything that you should do should be focused on getting kids to do that. Uh, they should be doing the thinking and the explaining, not the teacher. If you're telling them how to think about something or how to do something and you're explaining how something works, then you're not really having a number of talk, you're just lecturing. Um, the problem you can have with this is that sometimes they don't have any thinking. Uh, they're too busy trying to figure out what is it he wants me to say? What is the answer? Um, it, there's things, a lot of things you can do to get them to think. And uh, those are subjects for other videos. But that's the goal. Once the ball gets rolling, somehow, uh, you're really just a facilitator. Uh, what can you do with a number talk? I've seen... Uh, a lot of PD where number talks are presented as sort of random explorations where you throw up a few numbers on the board and they just say whatever comes to mind and go off on different tangents. Uh, you can do that. It's very difficult to do that way. Uh, and, and I think really it's kind of a, there's, there's a better use of the time you have so little time to cover so much material over a school year that number talks can be powerful vehicles if you target them for the purposes that you really need, like developing and extending number concepts like place value or the use of units and geometric measurement, you know, uh, relationships between different operations, uh, developing problem-solving skills. One of the best things, I think... Uh, for number talks is to is is when they're puzzles or sometimes word problems uh, give them the tools and have them explain why they did what they did it's great for teaching mental math processes which are so hard to do on paper the reason is mental math just doesn't translate well to paper it doesn't so to give an example of this, if I had to add up the cost of two things at a dollar ninety nine each, uh, mentally, I'd round that up to two. Two plus two is four, and subtract, compensate, subtract back out the two cents. Three dollars ninety eight cents. Now, mentally, that's a pretty quick process, uh, but if I had to write it all down, it would look really overcomplicated and convoluted. And it's just hard to explain that kind of thing on paper. If I had to do it on paper, and it would take a lot longer to do it, I'd stack them, and then I, I'd just, you know, use carryover addition. But the mental math process is going to be faster, even though it has the steps just really don't translate well to paper. That's why the conversation is the best way to talk about what those processes are. And that's where the differentiation comes in because it's discourse-based instruction. And that means that your kids are gonna have multi-level access to the conversation. Your concrete thinkers, they're gonna best access the conversation maybe early on. And you may have some higher level thinking that develops from that as you go through your conversation. The main thing is that everybody's gonna have somehow a voice, a way to express their thinking, an audience for it, you're going to have maybe not one kid at a time because it's hard to get through your whole class like that in, say, 10 or 15 minutes, but maybe with some turn and talks. Those are really great ways to get everyone a voice and everyone an audience and a chance to explain and think. So back up to the top, three basics. Get kids to explain their math thinking. Use them. They're powerful vehicles of instruction when they're targeted purposes. And 
it's discourse-based instruction, which is really great for differentiation and getting your whole class to contribute.